Shalom, Mishpach, Baruch Haba. Thank you for joining us here at Sarid for our weekly Torah teaching on the coming of Adonai Yahushua HaMashiach on this third week of counting the Omer. I trust that all is well with you. At this time, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and esteem to Yahuwah Elohim for the great wisdom and insight he has given us in his word to share with you concerning these times. If you are joining us here for the first time, um, I invite you to watch the orientation videos, orientation one and orientation two. So they will help you in your understanding uh, of how we look at scripture here. Now that we are assembled, the time of counting the Omer is and always will be a time of war in the scripture. And even to this day, it is a spiritual war because every religion out there has an appointed time to celebrate during these days, to gather other believers to their cause. Don't be deceived as though Yahuwah Elohim is with them. Because Yisrael is making some changes now and the anointing of Moshe is being set up to provide protection as they are preparing to go into one of the greatest battles of all time. But first things first, let's look in to see what's going on with Moshe. Dabarim chapter 34, we'll begin the Adut and verse 4 this week, followed by the witness over in Yochanan, 1st Yochanan chapter 2, we'll be looking at uh, verses 24 through 26. Then Yahuwah said to him, This is the land of which I swore to give Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Therefore let that abide in you, which you heard from the beginning. As we pick up from last week, Yahuwah Elohim instructed Moshe to go up to a very high mountainous range called Nebo, where he stood on the cliff of Pisgah. And when we covered this last week, we know this was a demonic place that was not to be trusted. And Yahuwah Elohim showed him why in a vision. We know this because of the definition on the word showed means to have a vision and learn about, to give attention to discern something that was going to happen in the land. A vision is the only logical explanation of what Moshe saw, because there was no way to see all of the physical land that the scripture made mention of. Neither can one see the western sea from that mountain range. And you certainly were not going to see the land of Naphtali from there. Yahuwah was showing him way more than the eye can see. So this was a vision that he saw of the demonic things that were going to be done by those who opposed the will of Yahuwah in the land. And it was to start in the land and spread throughout the world represented by the Western Sea. That is why Moshe went to the high place called Nebo to witness the demonic activity done there on the cliff of Pisgah, a demonic place that was not to be trusted. Yochanan confirms this as the anti-Mashiach, a very soon-to-appear demon from Babel, manifested in the likeness of Nimrod, rebellion in the high places where Moshe was standing. It was the kind of rebellion that was done valiantly. In other words, this thing will stop at nothing. Yochanan declared this is anti-Mashiach and his followers who Yochanan, he bore witness to, saying even back then during his time, many 
of his demonically influenced followers were already beginning to leave the assembly. They came in to learn the ways of Yisrael, find, about, find out about the new way of worshiping that was being set up by Yahuwah Elohim, to give to the world through his ben, Adonai Yahushua HaMashiach. A new religion, if you will, and it was called Yisrael, and not Judaism. Yochanan was filling in the blanks of the vision that Moshe saw, which included an anointing that was given to us by the Kadosh One himself for us to set apart the truth in the writings. You have to be anointed to line the scriptures up like this. The set apart anointing in the Ibrit was the only way one can be sure to spot both this demon and his followers who are masquerading as messengers of light. Twisting the scriptures concerning the knowledge of life everlasting and what is needed. Hunting for souls like Nimrod, the mighty hunter. So to Sari and those who follow, beware. That's why the mark of the accusative is on the word this in the survey line, Zot. Yahuwah says, it was the land. This word for land, H776, Eretz, describes both the land of the living and the land of Sheol, the land without return, the underworld. This is a spiritual land that Yahuwah is speaking of concerning, uh, according to the definitions. That's why he went up to Nebo. This is a dividing point, a spiritual dividing point that scholars have yet to discern. So let's look at what they missed, because this is important. This is about everlasting life, because of the mark of the accusative on the word this. It is highlighting something in the verse. This land, Moshe, is being shown. is talking about spiritual deception. The reason Abraham, Yitzchak, and Jacob are mentioned here is to demonstrate what is going to happen to the word regarding how to obtain everlasting life. The meaning of their names will tell of demonic activity and the attitudes of the people. The definitions on their names speak of things going on in the land about this written account. Yochanan says, therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. Now, in the top line, it reads, of which I swore. H7-7650, Sheba means to take an oath. So this is something that is done between two parties. This was Abraham in this line of survey. The swearing in the definition, it is used of Yahuwah by himself. This is something that he was going to do himself. It also means to curse. This is all in the same definition group. So to be clear, the oath that he's going to perform of himself comes with a curse. Okay? So it's something that the other party has to do. In the beginning, he gave it to Abraham the ancestor of a multitude, the exalted one of a multitude, the chief, according to the definition on his name. And according to Bereshit, that is Genesis chapter 17, where this event takes place, everyone claiming to be of the seed of Abraham was to keep the covenant given by Elohim, and not Allah, Islam. Abraham circumcised Yishmael also. He circumcised him in the flesh. So you're dealing with the spiritual nature of the Most High. And in case you have not noticed, belief is also in the flesh. This is where your heart and mind, the soul resides. It is in the flesh. Without belief in Elohim, circumcision means nothing. Once you change his name, 
the covenant does not apply to you, Judaism. In other words, no salvation, farewell, and good riddance. So now let's look at some more things written to establish the covenant of the oath. You have to go back and visit those words found in Breshit, chapter 15, because it's never been taught like this before, I'm sure. It was when the word of Yahuwah came to Abra in a vision and spoke to him concerning this very same land here in the survey lines. You can read the whole thing when you get a chance. I just want to make this point about the seed of Abraham and belief concerning this land they were to inherit. So I'll be reading out of the New King James Version with proper things restored. Beginning in verse 8. And he said, Adonai, how shall I know that I will inherit it? So he said to him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, three-year-old female goat, three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he brought all these to him and cut them in two, down the middle, and placed each piece opposite the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. Verse 11, and when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. The point here is, with these sacrifices, he followed the command given by Yahuwah Elohim. And all the seed of Abraham should do that. He brought everything. Yahuwah never told him to cut anything. All of this is judgment. And down in verse 17, Yahuwah passed through those parts for judgment. The only thing Abram did not cut was the birds. And here's why. The mark of the accusative is on the birds. This has everlasting life tied to it because the birds represented the spiritual offering. Something spiritual, lift it up. It flies. Okay? So this is righteousness. He got it right. He brought something that was not cut. It was not divided from itself. The birds represented spiritual things. It was the only kind of the animals that could fly. This alone is symbolizing a manifestation of something supernatural that the other animals just could not do. Flight separated the birds from the animals bound to the land. The vultures are other spiritual forces seeking to devour the carcasses, demons, if you will, unclean birds. Abram drove them away. The exalted one drove them away. And we are to do likewise. Abraham is the one from the beginning that Yochanan is speaking about. This divide symbolizes the spiritual land everlasting from the land of Sheol, the underworld. This land of Sheol is a land of judgment. The spiritual things lifted up to, to Yahuwah is not to be cut, mixed, or otherwise separated from its origins. The point is, follow the command of Yahuwah Elohim. Don't mix it with anything the Christians are doing. Don't mix it with anything the Muslims are doing. And definitely, don't mix it with anything the Jews are doing. All these animal parts bring judgment. All of these religious um, organizations claim to be heirs to the seed of Abraham. And this is earthly. They have separated themselves. Separated from their origins. They started out whole and ended up separated. Not the same as they started out. Now the spiritual part of the land is the clean birds. They represent that part 
of the land that is life everlasting. Again, all of this is what is given from the beginning. And this is the beginning. And this is why Yochanan says, therefore, let that abide in you what you heard from the beginning. He says this because of the meanings of Yitzchak, Yitzchak and Yaakov. They are troubling. Yitzchak means he or she laughs. The root means to mock, either scornfully or make something seem laughably, unreal, or impossible. This is spiritual, and we all know the story behind that name. Yochanan says, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. Abra. Yaakov means supplanter. To supplant something is to replace or take the place of a person or thing previously in authority or use. So this is separation. Yochanan says, therefore let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. Abram, Abraham, not Yitzchik nor Yaakov. When Yahuwah said he swore to give Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, the children were going to have troubles. It's the understanding there. Yitzchak and Yaakov are used here according to their definitions to represent the generations in Abraham who were to come along in the face of mocking and disbelief and be faced with deception in order to replace and supersede the origin of the oath that Yahuwah Elohim swore to Abra. To those who repent and recognize the demonic activity behind the scenes, they will have the good everlasting life. The covenant does not change. It is the misunderstanding of it that is misinterpreted. And to those who get it, they will understand from the beginning what was heard. <laughs> Saying, I will give it to your descendants. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you. Enough said. I have caused you to see it with your eyes. You also will abide in the bin and in all. I have caused you to see it with your eyes. Iron is the eye showing mental qualities. This is a vision that Moshe is being shown, a quality of the eye. And now, um, we see the vision here on the screen. As it reads, you also will abide in the Ben and in Ab. Not the Son and the Father. What you see here on the screen is what Yahuwah has caused you to see with your eyes. Ab is the root and shortened form of Abraham, Ab. That's what is from the beginning. It's the root. That is what is to be recognized in prayer and in supplications, along with the Ben. We are to abide in those Ibri origins. Continue in it. Hold on and keep it. So consider this very carefully before you decide not to continue in what is shown here. So as to confuse earthly things with spiritual things. The word is clear, so be mindful and don't get it twisted and lift up abominations to Yahuwah. And as a rule of thumb, I've mentioned before, say your prayers in the Abrit. Yahushua's prayer can be found online in the Abrit, and you can say that, and then afterwards, make your supplications known. In this way, you do not lift up abominations to Yahuwah. 
for you shall not cross over there. And this is the promise that he has promised us. Everlasting high. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. So as we survey these lines, we know that Moshe was being shown a vision of all that was to befall the spiritual understanding that Yahuwah Elohim gave to Moshe uh, and the demonic activity that was going to be going on in the physical land. This is earthly and sensual. This is where B'nai Yisrael was headed. And there were going to be some challenges here on earth, setting up everything in order to get people saved because of demonic supernatural forces holding sway over the people. Yahuwah tells Moshe he was not going to cross over there. He did not say he was not going to cross over. He just said he was not going to cross over there to experience anything that was going to happen there in the land that we saw in the vision last week when Yahuwah Elohim showed him all the land. That is an earthly promised land, but not the spiritual promised land where Yahuwah Elohim dwells, which is the ultimate promised land and the goal of all of scripture. This spiritual understanding of Yisrael is the key to unlocking the door to that land of the excellent everlasting life. Yochanan says this is the promise that he has promised us, everlasting high. Moshe was saved in every way. He was seen standing during the time of Purim in the land everlasting, speaking with Yahushua and Aliyahu. Yahushua was transformed and the three of them stood in the everlasting state, speaking of things to come. The taught ones saw it and they were fully awake by this time when Shimon Petra said to Yahushua, Adonai, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three Mishkanot, one for you, one for Moshe, and one for Aliyahu. Not knowing what he said, he was then chastened by Yahuwah Elohim. It records why he was still speaking. Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Ben, in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And Shimon, the Tithyahu, uh, Mark, and Lucas all gave that witness. So Moshe crossed over, but just not there. He crossed over to the spiritual land everlasting. And this is the promise that he has promised us. However, there are demonic forces at work in the minds of people here on earth. Trouble in the land, if you will. That is why the verse is added that reads, These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. This is simply good sound advice. Also, this crossing over requires passing through some waters, and the people will cross over the yard to get to the land of promise here on earth. Likewise, in the same way, the soul uh, that is gathered upon death passes through some waters as well. Waters that make up the atmosphere above and beneath the earth. The atmosphere above is seen in the survey line as everlasting chai, chayim olam. The goal of all of scripture is to get to this place. This also is the promise given from the beginning. And this essentially goes back to the garden. What was prophesied back then concerning the seed is being made known in the promise to Abraham. It is manifesting itself in the spiritual understanding of Yisrael. This is the promise that he has promised us as the seed chosen to bear witness of salvation. Double Ream 34, we'll be looking at verses 5 and 6, followed by the witness and first Yochanan chapter 2, we'll be looking at um, verse 27. So Moshe, the servant of Yahuwah, died there in the land of Moab. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. 
So Moshe, the servant of Yahuwah, died there in the land of Moab, in the land of his ancestors. It's the meaning of Moab, and this is used to symbolize the land everlasting. The land where all his ancestors and everyone from that time forward who desired to be saved according to all that Yahuwah Elohim instructed Moshe to teach B'nai Yisrael for salvation. This teaching is the anointing which we have received from him. This is about knowledge. This him is Yahushua, the one drawn down in Yochanan. They are both servants of Yahuwah and everything Moshe taught pointed to Yahushua. So in his teaching, we have everything necessary to make an informed decision about how to proceed in walking in the favor of Yahuwah to get to the prize. Both the written word, which is earthly, and Yahushua, the spiritual fulfillment, which is everlasting. These two together abides in you and in me. All who view the covenant from this perspective and practice it have a good expectation for the life everlasting. It abides in you. That word means it does not change according to the state or condition of it. The definition says to remain as one, and not to become another or different. It abides in you. So hold fast to what you have. It's been taught in this witness. According to the word of Yahuwah. And you do not need that anyone teach you. Amen. Praise Yahuwah for having his word written down. In this way, truth is made manifest and every lie is exposed by the word testifying for itself. And he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab opposite by it, Peor. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie. As we survey these, he buried him. The mark of the accusative is here on him. As it reads, he buried Aleftah in a valley in the land of his ancestors. The meaning of Moab, all of the writings were ancestral. It concerned the Isle of Ta. We see here the truth is now hidden, buried in a valley in the land of his ancestors. Moab is used here because of the meaning of the word that helps you understand where to find the truth about everlasting life. It can only be discerned in the Hebrew text of his ancestors. And this is no ordinary lettering system, as I am sure you are well aware of, if you have followed this teaching over the, the last few years. A lower buried Isle of Ta in a valley. You won't be able to find Moshe there. However, the truth of his writings about everlasting life are hidden in the valley. Yahuwah buried Isle of Ta. Moshe's name is not in this verse. This is no ordinary valley, and there's a lot going on in this valley because of the root words used to describe it. It's deep. It's about six or seven of them. And I'm just going to um, briefly go over a few. H1516, this is a steep and deep place. Okay. H1466, um, the first root speaks of pride being lifted up. The next root, H1460, speaks of the midst. So together, this is a deep, this is a place of deep understanding in the midst. H1342, is used concerning pride how to avoid it and be exalted and triumph. So this is deep. Still another one, H1354, speaks of how to be exalted against the bulwarks of illicit worship and arguments concerning differing views of everlasting life. 
be out of top. So, yeah, this is deep. This is seen down in Yochanan when it says, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true. This anointing is the ability to understand the writings found in the Abri. The deep spiritual understanding is hidden from most and given to certain ones to be shared with others in the land of their ancestors. Moab, shared among the people. This is what Yochanan is doing, and so am I. And although the truth is buried and hidden in a valley too deep for shallow people, one has to go look for it. It's not hard to find, but easily overlooked. It is opposite by it peor. This is the lie down in Yochanan, something opposing the truth. Yochanan says, and it is not a lie. So lies can run deep too. How do you convince people who read the scripture that Yahuwah Elohim is not the same as the Lord God? How do you convince them these are names of demons? And how did we come to this understanding that is accepted by the whole world and viewed as something insignificant? These people mock in the face of Yahuwah and have no shame for disregarding the word they so fondly profess to believe. So that's deep right there. They evidently have not been anointed with the teaching here in the survey line. If they did, they would know all things and not just some things. They can't, they can't answer all the questions, probably because of lack of oil. <laughs> now let's look at this lie where the truth is buried opposite of the house of Peor, by it Peor. This word Peor is a word that has reference to a demon, a false mighty one worshipped in Moab. It corresponds to Baal. And this is the, still the name of another demon that means the Lord. So the truth is opposite demonic references. The Lord. This is the trick used to this day. People everywhere humble themselves to this demon called the Lord. The things in this house, this setup, is a lie. These people have built a house in the likeness of what Yahuwah has established. The greatest story ever told can only be copied. And of course, the copy is not the original. So these are copycats, spiritual serial killers. Yahuwah buried him there for a reason. This is because of what happened in the wilderness when the people of, Mid of Midian People of strife came up against Yisrael and tried to destroy it from within. If you remember, Bayat Peor is the house of rebellion in the wilderness where Yisrael began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. The story is found in Bemidbar chapter 25. That's numbers. And some joined themselves to Baal of Peor. And the anger of Yahuwah was aroused against Yisrael. So I'm, I'm just going to briefly go over it. You can read it again when you get a chance. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, take all the leaders of the people and hang the offenders before Yahuwah out in the sun, that the fierce anger of Yahuwah may turn away from Yisrael. So Moshe said to the Shofetim of Yisrael, Every one of you kill his men who were joined to Baal of Peor. And indeed, one of the children of Yisrael came and presented to his brethren a Midianite woman in the sight of Moshe and in the sight of all the assembly of B'nai Yisrael. So this sight is, is dealing with the understanding here. And they were weeping at the door of the Echel of Midian. Turns out this woman was promoting some other way to everlasting life 
and using sex to do it. Intimate relations. If you remember the teaching on it, we talked about it here at Sarid. Then Panechas, the Ben of Alazar, the Ben of Aharon, the Cohen, saw it. And he rose from among the, the assembly and took a javelin in his hand. And he went after the man of Yisrael into the tent. This is where they were having intimate relations, if you will. And thrust both of them through. The man of Yisrael and the woman through her body. So the plague was stopped among B'nai Yisrael, and those who died in the plague were 24,000. So this is serious. Yahuwah sent a virus to take out the rebels. And Yahuwah said to, Mene, to Penechas, the Ben of Elazar, the Ben of Aharon, the Cohen, he says, he has turned back my wrath from B'nai Yisrael because he was zealous with my zeal among them so that I did not consume B'nai Yisrael in my zeal. Therefore, say, behold, I give to him a covenant of peace, and it shall be to him and his descendants after him a covenant of an everlasting kahuna, because he was zealous for his Elohim and made atonement for B'nai Yisrael. He was zealous for his Elohim. They were talking about something different. And not what the world says is Elohim. Because they have other opinions about what to call him. To continue, um, the name of the Midiani woman who was killed was Cosby, if you remember, meaning my lie. This is another opinion. That's what world religion has become. The Cosby kids. Cosby was a great teller of lies. So Bill lived up to his name. <laughs> Written right here in the scriptures. She was the daughter of Sur. This was their rock. The daughter symbolizes closeness. He was the head of the people of a father's house in Midian. This is strife. Then Yahuwah spoke to Moshe saying, Harass the Midianite and attack them. For they harassed you with their schemes by which they seduced you in the matter of Peor in the matter of Cosby, the daughter of a leader of Midian, their sister who was killed in the day of the plague because of Peor. The root is used here for Peor, meaning, meaning to open wide, to gape. Well, she was very tempting. Women have a gate that can lead you astray to another gate called Sheol. This valley where Moshe was buried was opposite that. It was opposite that according to the, to the story. So we are not to forget that covenant as well, to be zealous for Elohim. Harass false religion every chance you get. These are the days of counting the Omer, so make your witness count. But no one knows his grave to this day. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. This too is in the likeness of Yahushua. I remember him saying to his Lamedine during his anointing by Miriam, for you have the poor with you always, but me, you do not have always. He said this because he knew when he died, he was not staying in the grave. No, more, no memorial there. So there was never a grave site for him. No one knows where the tomb is. This cannot be discerned because if you remember, no one paid for the new tomb that he was laid in according to the survey line. This was trespassing according to the survey lines. So there was no record of ownership. It was a new tomb where no one had laid before. And in the likeness of that, no one knows where Moshe is buried. They do not know his grave to this day. The mark of the accusative is on the grave where he lay. This is the it in the survey line. 
just as it has taught you. This it is the anointing, the truth that has rubbed on you in the teaching. Everything concerning the grave and the victory of overcoming it. This is the highlight of the whole of scripture, the deep things, the things that are hidden. No other religions uh, plan out there using the scripture has this kind of makes sense understanding of the ancient documented writings. Seen in the upper survey line as the word of Yahuwah. This is along with the actual events foretold, documented for historical verification. The evidence is also seen in the way the survey of both records line up together to tell the story. And if that were not enough, um, the people who used uh, the story, Christianity, is one of the or the most dominating religion known to man. It is because of their, their foundation is based on the word of Yahuwah, albeit opposite, twisted, and demonic. Nevertheless, the word of Yahuwah is used. It prevails. They use it like the Midyani. And their judgment of omitting him will not go unpunished. For them and all who follow them. But because of the anointing, you will abide in him. To this day, as it reads in Deborim, this gives you the will to abide. Those who really care about the truth of this account will follow according to the ancient paths. This pleases Yahuwah and sets you apart according to knowledge. This is a matter of the will. The footnote, please. Look at that, reads, in you text reads, you abide. So demons are in the survey lines above and here Nebo shows up again. This time to take away your will to abide in him. As I mentioned, the prophetic teachings of Moshe give us the will, which is part of the anointing, the willingness to believe all that he has written concerning Yahushua in the word of Yahuwah and the will to do the things found therein for salvation. Okay, now, for the record, the word for abide in the Greek is conjugated. G3306 was meno. It is a verb with a pronoun interjection indicating the accusative in the second person. So this is the will of the second person, the one abiding. They see it, but they're overlooking it. Okay, appears they can't reason out their own teaching. So we have to check behind these people all the time, all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. Serial killers. Amen. Hold fast to the anointing given you and don't let anyone deceive you concerning the written word. Go back and glean from the survey lines. Stay focused and remember the ancient paths. Yahushua is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And remember, anything written in the scripture followed by words like forever and everlasting is continual and not to be done away with at no time. So stay focused. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpah. See you later.